وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد My beloved brothers and sisters, good news, amazing news. Inshallah ta'ala, the Sharjah uh, book fair is, is starting. And bi'idhnillah uh, al-kareem, every one of us should try to go and get ourselves something to read, inshallah ta'ala. My aim, inshallah ta'ala, in this lecture today is to shed some light on the importance uh, of books, especially to a Muslim, and how we should give our time, our mind to reading portions of uh, books daily. Some يعني, in knowledge, Islamic knowledge, academic knowledge, it doesn't matter, but beneficial knowledge, whether it be for the dunya and of course definitely for the hereafter. And I want to, inshallah ta'ala, in this uh, lecture, I want to talk about how our great scholars of Islam were when it came to books and reading, how they valued it. But before I go into that, I don't want to give the impression that I have uh, that myself, that I have the aspiration and I'm driven like that. The poet, he said, I don't want to pretend to be what I'm not. And I don't also want to give a false impression. I myself am I'm inspiring to all of, like all of you to uh, read and study and learn, inshallah ta'ala. That's one disclaimer, inshallah ta'ala. The second, inshallah ta'ala, is some of you might think to yourselves that me talking about reading and studying, shouldn't a person uh, attain knowledge from the great scholars of Al-Islam? Shouldn't the person sit under the feet of the scholars? Isn't that the way to learn? Or is it to read books? I want to say, I've said, said this before, I've explained this in other gatherings, other sessions, other lessons, other videos, other episodes, that of course, knowledge number one has to be taken from the mouth of the scholars. At-talaqi min afwahil ulama. Knowledge should be taken from the mouth of the scholars. وَلِذَلِكَ الشَّيْخِ بَكْرَ أَبُوْ زَيْدِ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى He has a kitab called حِلِيَةُ طَالِبِ الْعِلْمِ It's a big, small book. Every student of knowledge should give some time to, listening to, if you haven't got time to read it, listen to the Sharah of Sheikh Muhammad ibn Salih al uthaymin on YouTube, or even buy the hard copy and read the explanation of Sheikh ibn Uthaymin on it. It's a great book. It talks about the manners and the etiquette of the student of knowledge, how he should carry himself, what he should read, what he shouldn't read, and etc. It's a beneficial book. And in there, of course, he mentions, he says, الْأَصْلُ فِي الطَّلَبِ أَنْ يَكُونَ بِطَرِيقِ التَّلْقِينَ he says that the foundation of seeking knowledge, the proper way of seeking knowledge is that you take it from the, the scholars. They, they, they tell you what's in the books. And then he said, Anyone who enters knowledge by himself comes out by himself. What does that mean? Sheikh Bakr explains it for us. He said it, what it means is, Anyone who enters knowledge without a teacher, he comes out without no knowledge. So of course, without a doubt, if you try to go and open a book and read it without having studied with the scholars, your understanding, if it's right or wrong, you won't know. The poet, he said, the individual, the, the, the one who doesn't have knowledge, the one who's, يعني, uh, hasn't got understanding, thinks that by reading books by itself he will attain knowledge. You won't. You will not get the understanding of knowledge by just buying a book, filling it up in a room, creating a library like that, and you haven't studied with the ulama. You have to take the mukhtasarat. You have to take the abridged books, small books to, in every field. 
نحو أجرومية ورقات مذهب الشجاع في دول مذهب الشافعي أخص أخسر المختصرات حنبلي يعني small books of each science you have to take it with a teacher so he unlocks for you what is in the books once you've ما شاء الله taken يعني the beginner level the intermediate level even the advanced level of nearly every science then and after that you can buy books you can start making yourself a library you can start reading the big volume books but if you try to go straight away and buy books and start to read them without having studied with nobody the poet here said وَتَلْتَبِسُ الْعُلُومُ عَلَيْكَ حَتَّى تَصِيرَ أَظَلَّ مِنْ تَوْمَ الْحَكِيمِ the sciences will start to mix up and you will become a person who speaks about what he doesn't know acts as though he knows but doesn't really know and the people of knowledge will, will see that in you so the first thing I need to put out there is that knowledge has to be taken from the scholars. الشاطبي, one of the great scholars of Islam, one of the great scholars, rahimahullah, he has a great kitab called al ihtisam where he talks about the dangers of innovation and he talks about the importance of holding, holding on to the kitab and the sunnah. One of the great books that has been written in the science is his kitab al ihtisam It's become a reference point for the scholars. al Imam al-Shatibi also has another kitab called Al-Muwafaqat, okay, which is another kitab. He talks about Maqasid al-Shari'ah. In that book, Al-Muwafaqat, Shatibi says something very important about this topic, at this point. He says, إِنَّ الْعِلْمَ كَانَ فِي صُدُورِ الرِّجَالِ Knowledge used to be in the chests of people of knowledge, and it still is. Okay? Knowledge is in the chests of the scholars. As Allah said in the Quran, بَلْ هُوَ آيَاتٌ بَيِّنَاتٌ فِي صُدُورِ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمِ Knowledge is in the chest of the people of knowledge. Then look what he said. He said, ثُمَّ انْتَقَلَ إِلَى الْكُتُبِ The scholars who memorized it, from their teachers and teachers memorize it, from their teachers who memorize it, from their teachers who finally memorize it from the Prophet, those scholars chose out of their kindness and generosity to write those knowledge and to write that knowledge that they have in the, in the books. So he said, ثم انتقل إلى الكتب The knowledge they memorized, it, they, they moved it into the books. وصارت مفاتحه بأيدي الرجال But this is the golden point. This is the most important point you need to remember, which is what? The keys to that knowledge in the books is in their hands. So even though they've written it inside the books, you can't unlock it unless they give you the keys and they show you how to unlock it. Okay? So yes, let's get it out of the way. We're not saying to beginner students of knowledge who haven't studied, who, or students who haven't studied at all. Okay? Who haven't studied at all. We're not telling them go buy these books and go buy that book or get your, make yourself a library. The people I'm addressing here, inshallah ta'ala, is the people who are students of knowledge, who have teachers, they're learning from their teachers, okay? And uh, are on that path, inshallah ta'ala, to becoming scholars, who are working towards being ulama, inshallah ta'ala, for, for the ummah, learning for this ummah, so that they can take them out of the darkness of ignorance and bring them to the light of knowledge. Those are the people I'm addressing, inshallah ta'ala. And those people, of course, are of levels. Of course, I'm going to be addressing the beginner student of knowledge. And I will be addressing the intermediate student of knowledge. And I will be addressing the advanced student of knowledge. But I will not be addressing here at all in any way, shape or form. I will not be addressing the person who hasn't studied at all. That person, I would say, don't worry about books. Go to a teacher, sit down, and he will, inshallah ta'ala, uh, teach you. Okay? Uh, as for the books that I would tell students of knowledge to buy and the books and what publications there are, they're going to be that inshallah ta'ala i'm going to be doing a separate video for it inshallah ta'ala where i will be at the uh, book fair inshallah ta'ala and i will be showing you the books inshallah ta'ala and the publications okay and that will be another episode not this one inshallah ta'ala this is just me speaking to you all here now inshallah ta'ala so i won't be mentioning books that you should be getting and i will not be mentioning in this session inshallah ta'ala the publications of those books all i will be speaking about is the virtue of reading and studying and buying books. And of course, you all know the audience I'm talking to. As I mentioned, I'm talking to students of knowledge who have teachers, who are studying, who's, who read few books. They can either be beginner students of knowledge, they can be intermediate, and they can also be advanced students of knowledge. I just want to encourage them to, inshallah ta'ala, uh, go towards the path of learning. Brothers and sisters, the scholars, they say, seeking knowledge stands on three main pillars. The first pillar is al hifdu memorization. The second, the scholars they mention, is al-fahmu, understanding. 
And the third one is, a third one is, it's al-qira'ah, reading. Okay? So you have to have uh, some things that which you memorize. There has to be things which, which you understand. Okay? And the last part, inshallah ta'ala, is to read. And that's the, the lecture today. I've already spoken about the other two, okay? There are videos online. Uh, I've done it on YouTube. I've done it elsewhere where I've spoken about the other two. Today, I'm going to talk about books, okay? Inshallah ta'ala. My beloved brothers and sisters, one of the greatest blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us is that the things that are in our chests and in our minds, we are able to bring it out. And Allah has given us two avenues, two ways for us to bring that, that, that information or that thought that is in our mind and our heart. Allah has given us two ways to bring it out, subhanahu wa ta'ala. One is by speaking. We speak and we say what's inside us. And that's a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But imagine you, had to, you wanted to say something to someone, but you can't. It's a, it's, a, it's a form of punishment, right? You can't say what's inside you. For Allah to give you this blessing, Allah mentions it subhanahu wa ta'ala as a blessing and we're going to talk about it. And the second one is to literally write what's inside you, to express yourself on a pen and paper. It's also a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلِذَلِكَ it, the scholars, they look at it as a deficiency. That if a person has the ability to talk and speak, and he also has the ability to write, and he doesn't do any of that, okay? When he talks, he doesn't talk properly. When he writes, he can't write properly. The scholars, they say, this is a deficiency. They say, كَفَى بِالْمَرْءِ عَيْبًا أَن تَرَاهُ لَهُ وَجْهٌ وَلَيْسَ لَهُ لِسَانُ وَمَا حُسْنُ الرِّجَالِ لَهُمْ بِحُسْنِ إِذَا لَمْ يُسْعِدِ الْحُسْنُ الْبَيَانُ They say, enough shame for a person is he has a face, but then he doesn't know how to use his tongue. <laughs> this is not, it's not, you're not, you're not complete. You're not as you should be. Of course, we're talking about somebody who has the ability to. You can go and learn how to speak properly and correct your vocabulary and the way you talk. Also, the second one is, which is what Allah mentioned in the Quran subhanahu wa ta'ala is writing. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala in the Quran, he swore, swore by the pen. Allah says, Noon wal qalami wa ma yasturun. And Allah only swore by it, subhanahu wa ta'ala, because of its importance. Also, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, the first verse that came down in the Quran, from the first five verses, the first one, what did Allah say? Iqra! Bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Recite, read. Also, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he said, خَلَقَ الْإِنسَانَ عَلَّمَهُ الْبَيَانِ Allah says, I created mankind and I taught them how to clarify. عَلَّمَهُ الْبَيَانِ Ibn Al-Qayyim has a great kitab called Miftahu Dari Sa'ada. I encourage students of knowledge to also buy that book. That book is very powerful. It's called Miftahu Dari Sa'ada. Ibn Al-Qayyim in that book, he talks about the importance of seeking knowledge and how important it also is to have a drive and a will. And that whoever wants to get somewhere, they have to combine between knowledge and irada, desire to do, want to do something, okay? The knowledge and the desire to want to do it. It's not enough to just have the knowledge, right? You have to have desire to want to do it. And it's not enough to have the desire want to do it, to wanting to do it if you don't have knowledge. So Ibn al-Qayyim talks about the importance of having both. And he says a very powerful statement, rahimahullah ta'ala. I know I'm digressing, but... Uh, but it's a very important point to mention. He says everybody who wants to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has to have himmatun uh, turaqi, aspiration, desire to lift him, okay, to want to make him do it. And he has to have knowledge that gives him the insight, okay, and shows the path to, for, shows the path towards where you want to go to. So that book is very good. In that book, Ibn al-Qayyim, he talks about, okay, in that Kitab Miftah of Dari Sa'ada, Ibn al-Qayyim talks about the two types of bayan. Because Allah said in the ayah, right? خلق الإنسان علمه البيان, right? Al-bayan means to clarify. Ibn al-Qayyim, he says, he says, تأمل نعمة الله على الإنسان. Look at the blessing of Allah upon the, the human being. بالبيانين, the two bayan, the two ways of Expressing what's inside you, this blessing. Allah says, I taught you the bayan. I taught you how to, to uh, clarify and shed light on 
what's inside you. But Ibn al-Qayyim says, this blessing Allah is mentioning here comes by two ways. The first one he said is, It's the bayan where you, you're speaking, you utter what you want to say. That's one. And the second one is, Al-Bayan al khati means what? It means you express yourself by writing. When the, when the scholars, the poets, they talk about the, the, the beauty of uh, in, uh, poetry, they mention uh, and they say, وَإِنَّ أَحْسَنَ بَيْتٍ أَنْتَ قَائِلُهُ بَيْتٌ يُقَالُ إِذَا أَنْشَدْتَهُ صَدَقًا Eloquency in your speech, that the best poetry that a person can say is the poetry when the person says it, the people say, you know what, you're right. Or, if the poetry that is being said, if it doesn't move you, doesn't affect you the way you feel, then really you can't claim to, for it to be poetry, right? Meaning, having the ability to say something and it affects somebody. This is al bayan al And it's a, it's a, the Prophet even said, in the, in the fil bayan al-sihra, this, this is magic. Having the ability to articulate things. The second one is the one I want to talk about, which is called Al-Bayan al khati which is the writing. Oh, Allahu Akbar. If you have a qalam sayyad, you have a pen that, mashallah, you can write with. It's a blessing from Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala. And Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, I, I encourage you guys to go to his kitab, Miftah al Dali Sa'adi. His kalam is very long. He mentions, rahimahullah wa ta'ala, that this blessing of writing is what served and preserved Islamic civilization. I was, how do we know what Nabi Muhammad said, he said? How do we know what the Sahabas did and said? How do we know all of that? It's written for us. It was documented for us. It's not, of course, the only way, because there's also the other, which is the oral method. But writing is one of the ways that it was preserved and it was protected. And Ibn al-Qayyim says, وَلَوْلَ الْكِتَابَةُ لَنْقَطَعَتْ أَخْبَارُ بَعْضَ الْأَزْمِنَةِ and Ba'dil, some civilization and some يعني, uh, lands and people about, their, about them, we wouldn't have known if it wasn't for writing. وَدَرَسَتِ sunan. He said the sunnah would have even perished. وَتَخَبَّطَتِ الْأَحْكَامِ وَلَمْ يَعْرِفِ الْخَلَفُ مَذَاهِبَ السَّلَفِ The people came later will not have known what the people before that said. وَكَانَ يَعْظُمُ الْخَلَلُ الدَّاخِلُ عَلَى النَّاسِ فِي دِينِهِمْ وَدُنْيَاهُمْ لِمَا يَعْتَرِيهِ مِنَ النِّسْيَانِ الَّذِي يَمْحُوا صُوَرَ الْعِلْمِ Imagine all the innovators and the corrupt people who came in Islam and distorted the meaning. Imagine these, this knowledge wasn't written. What they would also try to do? They would have even tried to change the wording of the Qur'an. As Allah mentioned about the people of the, the past. يُحَرِّفُونَ الْكَلِمَ عَمْ مَوَاضِعِهِ They would change the words from its places, right? They would have tried to do that. And you might all think that's exaggeration, but the truth is the truth. And it's documented in a kitab called Khalq Af'ari al-Ibad by Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah that uh, Ja'ad ibn Dirham, who was the teacher of Jahm al-Safwan, Ja'ad ibn Dirham, okay? He, when he came to the ayah al-Rahman ala al-Arsh istawa, he mentions, Bukhari mentions in Khalq Af'ari al-Ibad, that he said, لو وجدت سبيلا من حقها, لو وجدت سبيلا, if I would, if I would have found a way, جعد من الدرهم is saying this, okay? If I was to find a way to remove this verse from the Mus'haf, I would have removed it from the Mus'haf. وكلم الله موسى تكليما, they changed it to وكلم الله موسى تكليما. Imagine that, that much, to distort it and change. Just so it doesn't go, uh, uh, in line, just so it goes in line with their aqidah. That's why they change it. So writing, brothers and sisters, from the get-go, it's something that's important. Our knowledge and everything has been preserved for us. Our deen has been preserved for us. Okay? And it's something, inshallah ta'ala, we should all remember and know. Okay? The second, inshallah ta'ala, is a point I want to talk about is how the pious predecessors. So the first one I spoke about, the the, the importance, okay, of expressing yourself uh, by either writing or by speaking. Inshallah ta'ala, now I'm going to go into the uh, pious predecessors, the scholars of Al-Islam, okay, how they were towards books and reading. 
It was said to Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak, a great scholar, rahimahullah, Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak, al-Hamdali rahimahullah, they said to him, إِذَا صَلَّيْتَ مَعَنَا لِمَا لَا تَجْلِسْ مَعَنَا When you pray the salah with us, why is it that you don't want to sit with us, you leave us straight away? He said, أَذْهَبُ مَعَ الصَّحَابَةِ وَالتَّابِعِينَ The reason is because I go, I go out with the sahabas, and I go out with the tabi'een. That's why. They said to him, قُلْنَا لَهُ وَمَنْ أَيْنَ الصَّحَابَةُ وَالتَّابِعُونَ Where are the Sahabas and the Tabi'un? So we can, they want to, people are like, okay, we want to go to them as well. Don't uh, just have this yourself, like share it with us. Where are they? He said, أَذْهَبُ أَنْظُرُ فِي عِلْمِي I go home and I look at the books. فَأُدْرِكُ آثَارَهُمْ وَأَعْمَالَهُمْ I go, I sit in, in the middle of my works and my books, and I look at the Sahabas, I live with them. I will see what Abu Bakr and Umar were doing. I see what the Prophet was saying there, and I envision all of this. And then look what he said. فَمَا أَصْنَعُ مَعَكُمْ أَنْتُمْ تَخْتَابُونَ النَّاسِ What is it that I'm going to do with you guys? They're just bite, backbiting people. What am I going to do with you? It was also mentioned that Al-Muhammad ibn Shihab al-Zuhri, again, another example of how they were towards their books and the love that they had for it. Muhammad ibn Shihab al-Zuhri, before I move on to this one, Muhammad Shahab Zuhri. Let's just really think of what Abdullah Mubarak mentioned. That by being with, by studying and reading and يعني, reading the hadith of the Prophet والسلام, reading the Quran and pondering over the verses, the benefit that you get is that you're living with a generation. You're living with the great Imams of Al Islam. You're living with the Prophet والسلام, You're living with the Sahabas. You're living with the tabi'een. That's what you're going to get. But when you say, I'm going to sit with the general mass, what you get from it is backbiting, hard heart, excessive laughing. So you need, you need to get that time to just sit down and read. It, pure, it purifies your heart and you benefit. وَلِذَلِكَ Muhammad ibn Shihab al-Zuhri, it was mentioned, قَدْ جَبَعَ مِنَ الْكُتُبِ شَيْئًا عَظِيمًا They said he gathered a lot of books. وَكَانَ يُلَازِمُهَا مُلَازَمَ شَدِيدًا That's another thing. He had a lot of books. And he didn't just buy these books, by the way, brothers. He was close to the books and he stuck with the books. رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى حَتَّى أَنَّ زَوْجَتَهُ قَالَتْ Until his wife one day said to him, وَاللَّهِ هَذِهِ الْكُتُبِ أَشَدُّ عَلَيَّ مِنْ ثَلَاثِ الْبَرَائِرِ Wallahi, these books are more severe to me than you marrying three other wives. For you to bring three other wives after me, okay, and the way that you are towards this book is, is more harder for me the way you are towards your book. Are we all together, brothers? Because... He gave his heart and his mind to it. There was, I, I read uh, Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala. They, they, he said, uh, he mentioned that he lost uh, treasures. Yani he lost uh, yani a large quantity of books got lost from Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala. And he said, rahimahullah ta'ala, uh, Malik ibn Anas, Imam Udari al-Hijra. He said, for me to find, for me to uh, find those books, uh, and uh, have those books uh, is more, yeah, those books were more beloved to me and to get them back would be more beloved to me than to lose my wife and children and all the wealth that I have. Imagine that. That's how the level of love that they had for knowledge and of course for books. And that was their means to knowing what the Prophet was doing, alayhi salatu wasalam. It was their way of knowing what the Prophet sallallahu at was saying. It's like the poetry that the poet said. He said, "Lana julasau ma namalu hadithuhum." We have people we sit with. We don't get tired of sitting with them. They're just talking to us, and we're listening to them. We don't get tired of hearing what they have to say. Ali ba'u ma'munu na gayban wa mashadan, and they're reliable behind our backs and in front of our faces. Books don't deceive you. They don't backbite you. They're the best friend to have. يُفِيدُونَنَا مِنْ عِلْمِهِمْ مَا مَضَى They benefit us, the poet said, from the knowledge of the past that they have. وَرَأْيًا وَتَأْدِيبًا وَمَجْدًا وَسُؤْدَدًا 
and it benefits us opinions. It gives us very beneficial opinions, and it gives us uh, adab and mannerism and honor and leadership. We gain we gain from it, right? Uh, the poet said. Um, so, books, brothers and sisters, brings about those benefits. Another poet expressing the benefits and the beauty in books, he says, "Ni'mal jalisu ida khalouta kitabu." The best friend to have when you're by yourself is a book. The best friend to have. Tellu bihi ida khanak al ashabu. When your friends deceive you and people let you down, he's a book will not let you down. لا مفشيا سرا إذا إذا استودعته. It won't spread your your uh, secret if you give it. And when you write your secret inside a book, it won't go and start telling people. وتنال منه حكمة وصواب. And what you benefit from it is what you learn from it wisdom, and you learn what is right. We never let met Nabi Muhammad. We don't know. That our Prophet alayhi salatu was salam, uh, the way he uh, looked, except through the books. And Imam Tirmidhi left behind for us his shama'il. We look into it, we see how the Prophet looked and the way he was, alayhi salatu was salam. Another poet, he said, عَلَيْكَ بِالْحِفْدِ دُونَ الْجَمْعِ فِي كُتُوبِ Upon you is memorizing, my brother, okay, inside your books, give importance to memorizing. فَإِنَّ الْكُتْبَ فَإِنَّ الْكُتْبَ The books فَإِنَّ الْكُتْبَ The books آفَاتٌ تُفَرِّقُهَا Books might have different harms and problems that come to it. الْمَاءُ يُغْرِقُهَا Water might drown it. It might drown, it might drown somewhere. Or water might come into contact with it and destroy it. وَالنَّارُ يُحْرِقُهَا And even uh, fire might burn it. وَالْفَأْرُ uh, The mouse now uh, he might eat through it. A thief might rob it. So the poet, he said, what's the advice? If you're not going to be a real scholar and a person of great knowledge if you are uh, not memorizing what's inside the books. And giving it importance, but the books have, without a shadow of a doubt, it has a lot of benefits that we take, that we take uh, from it. Another powerful statement that really touched me when it came to the importance of books and how the scholars used to look up to it, is the statement of a great scholar. When it comes to writing, he's something else. His name is Mustafa Sadiq Al Rafi'i. He is rahimahullah rahmatan wasi'a. He has a kitab called Wahy Al Qalam. And another kitab called Tariqul Adab al Arabi. Tariqul Adab al Arabi, inshallah, we're going to be studying it in our AMAU Institute, inshallah, AMAU Academy, inshallah. We're going to be teaching the students of knowledge uh, the, uh, the history of the Arabic language and how it came about. We called it Fiqhul Lugha, inshallah. This kitab is a masterpiece. Okay? And this kitab, Wahyul Qalam, anyone who reads it and understands it, the Arabic language that this man uses, it's something else, rahimahullah. And I don't want to go into his biography and what type of person he was, it's something else. But the point is, he said something very powerful, which the Quran already said it before him. He says, السَّيْفِ لَا تَقْوَى دَعَامَتُهَا He said, in, his, in, in a line of poetry, he said, وَدَوْلَةُ السَّيْفِ لَا تَقْوَى دَعَامَتُهَا مَا لَمْ تَكُنْ حَالَفَتْهَا دَوْلَةُ الْكُتُبِ A government cannot stand on its foundations. Okay, with just mere sword, if it forces its people and it don't want stand. Unless that country embraces knowledge, books, educates the people, leaves behind something for the people, people will, will the government will stand. One of the greatest. Great, and inshallah ta'ala, this whole history of books and how publications started and all of this, inshallah ta'ala, and me and uh, Akhuna Shahid, we're going to have a podcast on it. And this is just the importance of books, how books are important. That's all I'm talking about here. And we'll be talking about that. But one of the biggest, biggest, يعني, historically, biggest known uh, grand libraries was 
a library in Baghdad called Baytul Hikmah. Harun al-Rashid was the one who started it uh, from the Dawla al-Abbasiyin and it stood for years and it stood until the Tatar uh, came into uh, Baghdad, Holako, and he killed the Muslim leader and all of the books that were there were destroyed, were burnt, were thrown into the ocean and the sea and it was lost, a lot of the works. Some of the historians mention every single book was, was, was destroyed that was there. Every single one of it. Some scholars mention it. Inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to be talking about the Islamic makatibs, inshallah, in great details. This topic, I'll talk about it in great details. Also, my beloved brothers and sisters, another powerful statement that shows us the importance of books is a statement that one of the scholars, it was said to them, he was found in a dark room with a little lamp or a little candle on and they said to him uh, do you not um, do you not find loneliness in this room by yourself nobody's with you you're all by yourself and then he said uh, in response to that he said can someone who has all types of companionship, can that person find loneliness? Like how can you feel lonely when you have all the companionship that you need? Like if you have all the people you need with you, how can you feel lonely? They said to him, who, 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 who are these people that are accompanying you that you're referring to? And he said, al -kutu. Books. One of them, it was said to them, Another one was asked, who, who do you find solace and uh, companionship in? He hit his hand on his book and then he said this. And then they said to him, not the books, the people we're talking about here. And he said, the people inside these books are the ones I find. So it's a book and the people inside it, which I find uh, in it. Well, I, brothers and sisters, what I've read in this topic of uh, the love that scholars had for books, my mind, mind boggling, I'm, mind, I'm shocked, I'm gobsmacked with what I've read, it, it, how they were towards it. There's a kitab called Rawdatul Muhibbin wa Nushatul Mushtaqin by Ibn Al-Qayyim. This kitab, Ibn Al-Qayyim talks about love, obsession, that people have, right? And in there, subhanAllah, he mentions a story of his teacher, Ibn Taymiyyah. And before he mentions that, he says, man asabahu maradun. I know a group of people, I know he's talking about Ibn Taymiyyah, because right after that, he mentions Ibn Taymiyyah. I don't know if it was it before that or after that, but it's in the context. He says, I know a group of people, Ibn Al-Qaim saying this, I know a group of people. Man asabahu maradun. Min suda'in wa human. They had headache, fever, وَكَانَ الْكِتَابُ عِنْدَ رَأْسِهِ And the book was right next to their head. فَإِذَا وَجَدَ إِفَاقَةً Whenever they got better, a little, like the pain just released a little bit. قَرَأْ فِيهِ They open the book and start reading it. فَإِذَا غُلِبَ وَضَعَهُ When the pain overcomes them, they put them down, down the book. فَدَخَلَ عَلَيْهِ الطَّبِيبُ The doctor spoke to these, um, these patients, these, these people like this. Uh, and then said to them, uh, he said to them, This is not right for you. Don't do this to yourself. You're hurting yourself, you're going to cause yourself harm. And they wouldn't listen to the doctor because of the passion that they had. Al Hassan al Lu'lu'i, another powerful statement that I read was remarkable, shocked. He said, For 40 years went by. وَلَا بِتُّ وَلَا تَكَأْتُ إِلَّا وَالْكِتَابُ مَوْضُوعٌ عَلَى صَدْرِي So 40 years I did not sleep. I did not have a little قَيْلُولَ مَا قِلْتُ وَلَا بِتُّ وَلَا تَكَأْتُ I haven't lied down. I haven't slept except that the book was on my chest. For 40 years. 40 years the book was on my chest. Meaning I was reading. I slept reading. 
Brothers, the issue goes as far as, and inshallah, I don't want to go into great details, but I have written a portion of great scholars who died whilst reading, and some of them whilst write, die, uh, writing. Abdurrahman Yahya al-Mu'allimi. Abdurrahman Yahya al-Mu'allimi. Where was he found? He was found in, in, on top of his book, dead. The author of the Kitab al-Tankil bima fi ta'nib al-Kawthari min al-Abatil al-Anwar al-Kashifa yani raf'u al-Ishtibah Abdurrahman Yahya al-Mu'allimi that you all know he died on his book, they said. In Maktabat al-Haram. Unknown man uh, to the people. But once he died, everyone was lost of words. They called him the Habiul Asr. And he was the Imam with the of this of the era. Sheikh Bakr Abu Zayd and Sheikh Al Albani. All of them praised them. I think Albani one time said, I saw him. He didn't know much about him. Sheikh Nasser said, I saw him. Albani said, I saw him. And when I saw him, he was in the middle of books. Yeah, yeah. Inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to mention these scholars and the type of people they were, how they were towards their books. Rahimahumullah. And uh, the love was excessive, brothers and sisters. I want to mention a story. Because people love stories, right? Let's listen to stories of the great scholars. There was a scholar by the name of Abu Hassan al Fali, Rahimahullah. Abu Hassan al Fali, Rahimahullah, uh, he had a book of Al Jamhara by Ibn Durayt. The Kitab Al Jamhara Ibn Durayt is one of the books of Adab and Arabic literature. Uh, Abu Hassan Al Fali, I also seen it written as Abu Hassan Al Qali, both I've seen it, but the majority of the scholars they mention Abu Hassan Al Fali. Abu Hassan Al Fali, he wrote this book with his own hand, they said. And he had the best copy and the most. He, he took real care of it and he loved it. It was a precious book for him. But he got to a point where he had to sell it. He reached poverty and hunger to a level where he had to sell his book. When he sold it, just before he put sent it to the, to the market to sell the book, he wrote a few lines of poetry for it. He wrote, Anistu biha ashirina hawlan wa bi'atuha لقد طال وجدي بعدي بعدها وحنيني وما كان ظني أنني سأبيعها ولو خلدتني في السجون ديوني ولكن لضعف وافتقار وصبية صغار عليهم تستهل شؤوني وقد وقد تخرج الحاجات يا أم مالك كرائم من رب به نظنيني. He wrote these painful lines of poetry in the book inside the book and. I'll explain what those words of line of poetry is. A Sharif al Murtadi, who bought the book from the market, okay, saw the book and he saw the lines of poetry written in it. As soon as he opened it, he saw in it that the poet, somebody wrote in it, I've had this book in my presence for 20, yani 20 years. حَوْلًا وَبِعْتُهَا 20 years and I now was forced to sell it. لَقَدْ طَالَ وَجْدِي بَعْدَهَا وَحَنِينِ My suffering and my, dis my, my love and my passion for my book has, uh, has, has, is, has been, for, is been going on. I've, I'm feeling this for so long. The love that I have for my book. And then look what he said. وَمَا كَانَ ظَنِّي أَنَّنِي سَأَبِيُعُهَا I never thought I would ever sell my book. وَلَوْ خَلَّدَتْنِي فِي الدُّيُونِ سُجُونِ Even if, يعني, uh, and uh, debt will put me into prison. If debt will put me into prison, I never thought I would reach a point where I have to sell my book. But it was because of weakness. It was because of weakness. It was because of need at that moment, and it was because of my children. That's why I was forced to sell it. And historically, brothers and sisters, uh, some scholars were like that. They, they reached that level of poverty now. Anyways, Sharif al-Murtadi, what happened was, as soon as he saw the book, he gave, he gave it back to the uh, Abul Hassan al-Fali. He said, take the book back. And he gave him the money. He gave him the money that he needed for him to get out of his debt. Coming back to the point I was mentioning, a lot of scholars have been like this. 
where they were hungry. They had nothing. They were starving. It was mentioned that the great Maliki scholar, his name was Abu Muhammad, uh, Abdul Wahab ibn Ali ibn Nasr al-Baghdadi al-Maliki, who died here, 422 Hijriya. They said about him, he was uh, very, very poor in Baghdad. He had nothing suffered in Baghdad. And uh, he even said to his students one day, uh, my students, none of you have the ability to give me two breads every day and I will stay in Baghdad. I will teach you guys everything. I just need somebody to give me two bread uh, every day. But there are students like him. They looked at him to say, we don't have anything. So he packed his bags and he said, I have to leave Baghdad. I can't stay like this. I need to go. So he left Baghdad and he looked back at Baghdad and he said, Baghdad darul li ahli al-mali tayyibatun. Baghdad is a place very good for the rich people. Walil mafalisi darul dunki wa dhiqi. But the people who are poor, it's a very hard place to stay in. ضللت حيران أمشي في أزقتها. I was walking in its roads, confused and lost. كأنني مصحف في بيت زندقي. I was like a مصحف in the house of a heretic. Those are the lines of poetry he said. He said بغداد دار لأهل المال طيبة وللمفاليس دار الضنك والضيق. ضللت حيران أمشي في أزقتها. كأنني مصحف في بيت الزندقي. And then he left Baghdad and he said سلام على بغداد في كل موطن وحق لها مني سلام مضاعف فوالله ما فارقتها عن قل لها وإني بشطي جانبيها لا عارف ولكنها ضاقت علي بأسرها ولم تكن الأرزاق فيها تساعف وكانت كخل كنت أهوى دنوه وأخلاقه تنأ بي وتخالف. يعني I didn't leave this place because of any other reason other than poverty and hunger. It reminds me of the lines of poetry of Ibn Zurayq al-Baghdadi. The same thing happened to him. That uh, Ibn Zurayq al-Baghdadi, they said to him, he was with his wife, and uh, he said to his wife, he loved her, he was, it was his cousin he was married to, and he, he loved her so much. And he uh, said to her, I have to leave. I have to go and I have to uh, get some money. Because every day he goes out the house and he comes back, he doesn't bring anything with him. So he said to her, I can't live like this. So I, I heard uh, the, uh, the, uh, the ruler of Andalus. I heard he gives money to poets. But I'm going to go try to get some money from him. So he went to, Baghdad, so went to Andalus. When he went to Andalus, he uh, visited and met the ruler of Andalus. And the ruler... Uh, listen to his recitation of the poetry and he didn't give him much he gave him something very small and they said ibn zuraiq was traveling from baghdad to andalus for 10 months 10 months it took him to get there when he read his poetry and he got no money not much and they said the ruler was testing him but ibn zuraiq went home and he uh, died out of sadness and heartbreak and when they came to the ruler after a few days wanted to give him good money uh, he found him dead with this poetry written uh, next to him. They call it Qasidatu, uh, the poetry they call it Qasidatu uh, al Yatimiya, meaning this is the only poetry that we know of Ibn Zuraiq, and this is the only story we know of him, to be honest. He said, fi Baghdad li qamaran bil min falak al azraq matla'uhu wadda'tuhu wa biwuddi law yuwadda'uni. Safwa al-hayati wa inni la awaddi'uhu Yani line, a very long line of poetry that the scholars say is one of the most saddest poetries a person has ever written. And it is also very powerful in eloquence. The reason I mention that is because some of the great scholars, my beloved brothers and sisters, they uh, were um, they were they were financially broke. They didn't have anything. My beloved brothers and sisters, if today you're not going to start you're not going to read, you're not going to study, you're not going to learn. When are you going to start? Ask yourself this question. When are you prepared and prepare, are you preparing to start and learn? The poet, he said, إِذَا كَانَ يُؤْذِيكَ حَرُّ الْمَصِيفِ وَكَرْبُ الْخَرِيفِ وَبَرْدُ الشِّتَاءِ وَيُلْهِيكَ حُسْنُ زَمَانِ الرَّبِيعِ فَأَخْذُكَ لِلْعِلْمِ قُلِّ مَتَى 
if the heat is يعني, hurts you and وَكَرْبُ uh, الْخَرِيف autumn brings you distress وَبَرْدُ الْشِتَاءِ and winter make, it's too cold for you وَيُلْهِيكَ حُسْنُ رَبِيعِ زَمَانِ and spring وَيُلْهِيكَ حُسْنُ زَمَانِ الْرَبِيعِ and spring distracts you with its beauty and its everything فَأَخْذُكَ لِلْعِلْمِ قُلْ لِي مَتَى then when are you prepared when are you getting ready to seek knowledge when do you have in mind to seek knowledge if the four seasons every season there's an excuse some are you're saying it's too hot I can't seek knowledge it's so hot how do you even do it and then when and uh, autumn comes or fall as it's also known as you say uh, it's distressing it's a very gloomy I don't like it it distresses me winter I don't like it. it's so cold I freeze I can't do that and um, uh, spring oh yeah spring is just so beautiful I get distracted I can't read I can't study it's so distractful look at this everything the birds chirping and everything and so the poet said, فَأَخْذُكَ لِلْعِلْمِ قُلْ لِي مَتَى When are you prepared? When are you going to go and seek knowledge? My beloved brothers and sisters. For you to have aql is not enough, brothers and sisters. To say, I know, I've got aql. Knowledge is important. And I'm going to conclude this line of poetry, which is, they say, aql and ilm one time met. And they spoke to each other. The poet, he said, علم العليم وعقل العاقل اختلفا There was a dispute between the two of them. Which one is more virtuous? من ذا الذي منهما قد أحرز الشرفة Which of me and you are the most virtuous? Who is more virtuous? Me or you? فالعلم قال أنا أحرزت غايته Knowledge said, no, no, I'm higher than you. I've taken all virtue. والعقل قال أنا الرحمن بي عرفا عقل said, no, you wouldn't have known Allah سبحانه وتعالى if it wasn't for me. Knowledge then thought for a little bit. فأفصح العلم إفصاحا وقال له بأن بأين الرحمن في قرآنه التصفى. Then knowledge said, hmm. which of you, which of us, mean you? Did Allah describe Himself in the Quran? Allah never used the word aqil. He always calls Himself alim, ilm. Never calls Himself aqil. فبان للعقل فبان للعلم أن العقل سيده. The poet said it became clear to the aql that knowledge is his master. So he kissed his head and they went together. So here we take, brothers and sisters, the importance of learning and seeking knowledge. Finally, I conclude by saying everything I've said you can find in the following books. One of the books you can find in the importance of reading and studying is the Kitab Akhlaqul uh, Quran by Ajurri. Another Kitab which is the bulk of everything I've mentioned and far more is in there is Taqeed al-Ilm by Khatib al-Baghdadi. The whole book is about that. Recording knowledge is called Taqeed al-Ilm. So he talks about books and its importance and everything. Another kitab called Al-Mufradi, Mufrad al-Alami, Fi Rasm al-Qalami, by Sayyid Ahmed al-Hashimi, the author of the kitab Jawahir al-Adab, very powerful book. I encourage you all. Al Imam Al Allama Bakr Abu Zaid Rahimahullah has a kitab called Al Riqabah Al Turath, which is a powerful book where he talks about protecting the, in, the heritage works and the books. And by the way, one of, one of the benefits I saw in that book is that he mentions the Muslims have three million manuscripts in 2000 makatib in the world. That was the approximate numbering he gave. So all of this, inshallah ta'ala, we'll be speaking about it in great details, inshallah ta'ala, in a podcast uh, that me and uh, Brother Shahid are, go are going to have, inshallah ta'ala. Also in the kitab, Jam'u al-Bayani al-Ilm wa Fadli by Ibn Abdul Barr, Al-Jam'u al-Adabi al-Rawi by Khatib al-Baghdadi, Al-Faqih wa Al-Mutafaqi by Khatib al-Baghdadi, Al-Rihlatu fi Talab al-Hadith by Khatib al-Baghdadi. Also another kitab, strangely enough, is written by the, they call him Khatib al-Mu'tazila. It was the Khatib of the Mu'tazila, Al-Jahif. He has a kitab called Al-Haywan. Okay, this kitab is full of benefits, especially from the perspective of Adab, Adab al lugha The literature and the wordings that he uses are very beneficial, but the description he gives about knowledge, uh, sorry, books, is also profound, very profound. 
uh, has a lot of things he says about it. Also, Tadkirat al-Sami' wal Mutakallim by Ibn Jama'ah, Ta'lim al-Ilm by Zirnuji, Adab al-Talab by al-Shawkani. Also, another kitab called Namudaj min al-A'mal al-Khayriya, written by Muhammad Munir Abduh Agha al-Dimashqi, who was the, uh, the author, uh, the owner of Maktabat uh, al-Muniriyah. And by the way, he had a role to play in the guiding of Muhammad Khalil al-Harras. Muhammad Khalil al-Harras, rahimahullah ta'ala, he was uh, instructed by his Azhari teacher to write a book in refuting Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. Muhammad Khalil al-Harras, right? And so Muhammad Khalil al-Harras wanted to refute ibn Taymiyyah and write a book against him. And so he went to this maktaba by Muhammad Munir Agha uh, Dibashqi and he bought uh, some books from the place to read and he realized that he was trying to refute Ibn Taymiyyah ta but he played a role in read, show him the works of Ibn Taymiyyah read this book, read this book, read this book until uh, Muhammad Khalil al Harras was in love with Ibn Taymiyyah after he read all those books and Allah guided him subhanahu wa ta'ala and so he wrote his one of the best books written about Ibn Taymiyyah, about his biography called Ibn Taymiyyah as Salafi, he called it. And so he proved that he is a Salafi. And actually, the scholar, the, his teacher initially told him to write Ibn Taymiyyah is Laysa bi Salafi. And so when he read his works, he realized that he is a Salafi. Also, another kitab called Qutufu Adabiyya, How to Tahqiq al Kutub by Abd Salam Harun. Abd Salam Harun is a unique individual uh, when it comes to Tahqiqat al Kutub. Uh, there's a kitab I have that I am currently trying to finish reading. It's called Khazanatul Adab by Abdul Qadir uh, Al Baghdadi. It's a powerful book. And uh, it shocked me when I saw at the ending of the book that Abdul Salam Harun mentions that he was working on the tahqiq of this book for 15 years. 15 years. He says those 15 years were not just stop, start, stop, no. 15 years of effort and hard work. So Abdul Salam Harun is a muhaqqiq kabir. I think he's deserving of his biography to be spoken about in great details. Also, Mahmoud Shakir's kitab, Risalatun fi tariqi ila thaqafatina. Mahmoud Shakir shocks me as an individual. Mahmoud Shakir, rahimahullah, his passion for reading, rahimahullah ta'ala. He mentions in his kitab, Risalatun fi tariqi ila thaqafatina, which some, you might even find it published sometimes with the Kitab Al-Mutanabbi by Muhammad Shakir rahimahullah ta'ala. He mentions something that took me by great surprise when I was reading it. He mentions that, as you know, brothers and sisters, uh, Taha Hussein, who uh, deviated, okay, what he wrote, he wrote a book called uh, Adabu, uh, Shi'ar Al-Adab Al-Arabi. And in there he talks about that the Arabic poetry is manhul, meaning it's falsely attributed to pre-Islamic poets, it doesn't really exist, and all of that, he brings all of those kalam. And he wasn't the first to say that, by the way. He got it from a man by the name of um, David Samuel Magaluth, uh, Orientalist. He got it all from there. But Mahmoud Shakir, this story is very good, powerful. Mahmoud Shakir, as you all know, Taha Hussein was the reason why Mahmoud Shakir got even into Jama'at al-Asr, right? He, was, he played in a role in bringing him to Jama'at al-Asr. Okay, then Muhammad Shakir at the beginning he was into Ulum al Sharia and then he wanted to study language and you couldn't do that in Jama'at al Azhar. Anyways, Muhammad Shakir was helped by Taha Hussein. Taha brought him into the Jami'ah and also was the reason why Muhammad Shakir actually left Jama'at al Azhar as well. Because in one of the classes, Taha Hussein spoke about this Shubha. Okay, by saying Umar al Qais and Antara and Zuhair ibn Abi Sulma and Nabigha al Dubiani and all these men, these poetries are not theirs. And pretended like it was his, his opinion, but he got it from a, an Orientalist. Muhammad Shaq, what touched me was, before that, he had already come across this issue. He said, I read it when I was a, a teenager, 14, 13, I'd already read this, this kalam. And I knew where he got it from. But what shocked me more, brothers and sisters, was, Taha Hussein, of course, he had a big influence. He was the head of the Jama'at al-Azhar, right? So, uh, sorry, uh, Muhammad Shakir, he went home. He left the Jama'at, first of all, he left the Jama'at. 
He went home and he said, I read every black on white, every paper and anything. He said, whether it's tafsir, whether it's aqidah, whether it's philosophy, geography, maths, uh, tafsir, uh, of course, Arabic language, uh, dictionaries. I did not leave anything. Ibn T uh, sorry, uh, Muhammad Shakir, he locked himself in a house and just read everything. He locked himself in the house, read everything he could. And then he came out with his Kitab Al-Mutanabbi, which he won the uh, Jaizat Malik Faisal for it. And that shows you the aspiration they had for seeking knowledge. I also heard Sheikh Abdul Karim uh, Al-Khudair, when he, before they elected him, uh, they, they wanted to elect him as Hayati Kibar Ulama, Legend of Daimah. They told him, they said, we're going to elect you and we're going to make you a member. He said, listen, I have to finish this much books before I get going to the, uh, I'll be a member of the uh, legend of Daima. I have to finish this much books. And I, this man is something else when it comes to reading. Uh, Sheikh Abdul Karim al Khudayr Hafidhahullah Ta'ala. So my beloved brothers and sisters, what we take from this, is the importance of reading and working on getting books, reading them, acquiring beneficial knowledge from it, inshallah ta'ala. Anything I've said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and shaitan and Allah and his messenger are both free from it. Subhanakallah, bihamdi, ashadu wa la ilaha illallah, astaghfiruka wa tubulayh.